The stretch of Grand Avenue just west of the downtown area has been a rich breeding ground for Chicago's criminal organization known as the Outfit. Tony Cardo, its most notorious leader, was born here at 1353 West Grand. The second son of Francesco and Maria Cardo, he spent most of his first two decades here. By the time he was in his mid-teens, he was an active member of the circus gang. This mob, headed by Claude Scree Maddox, also provided the start for Machine Gun Jack McGurn and Tough Tony Capizio. Before he was 21, Cardo became a member of the Capone organization, which evolved into the outfit. When he stepped into the leadership in the 1940s, it was a role he would hold for most of the rest of his life. Yet he never spent a night in jail. Richard Kane was another who got his start and met his demise along Grand Avenue. A bit east from Accardo's boyhood home is this unassuming storefront, once the home of Rose's Sandwich Shop, where this alleged JFK assassin was executed. Tony Spilatro was a name every mob watcher is familiar with. Here at the intersection of Ogden and Grand is where Tony's parents own a restaurant called Patsy's. This is where he got his first exposure to mob life, as Patsy's was a hangout for mobsters like Sam Giancana, Jackie Cerrone, Gus Alex, and Frank Nitti. For a little man, Tony lived large. From the humble beginnings of the teenage shoplifter, he scaled the heights of organized crime. His exploits were turned into pulp faction in the classic Martin Scorsese flip casino, where Joe Pesci played him as Nicky Santoro. It was all true, putting a guy's head in the vice, attacking someone with a pen, becoming godfather of Las Vegas only to be undone by his own greed, and end up beaten to death and buried in an Indiana cornfield. The area looks nothing like it did, and the outfit ain't what it used to be either, but they're still around. Albert Vina, head of the Grand Avenue crew, was recently tapped to be outfit street boss by acting leader Salvatore Sally D. De Laurentiis. Vina has been known to hang out at this North Milwaukee Avenue bar. In 1992, the five-foot-tall Vina was acquitted in the bench trial of murdering Sam Tagli of River Forest. Vina was alleged to have shot Tagli in the head, slit his throat, and then stuffed him in the trunk of his own car. Tagli has stood over six feet tall. He was last seen leaving his girl's friend's house with Vina. The next time he was seen was in the trunk. But when the car was found, the front seat had been moved up to accommodate a killer with very short legs. Judge James Flannery Jr. quitted Venus saying there were too many other explanations.